In this week's guitar lesson, we're gonna break down a country style lead. We're gonna break it all down note for note. I'll show you where all those notes come from. And this will be full of licks that you can steal from this and apply to your playing. And it doesn't matter if you play country or blues or jazz or whatever style, you can take these licks and apply them, or at least these concepts and apply them. And there's a little bit of something for everyone. Even if you're an intermediate or a beginner guitar player, advanced, there's elements of all of that in this lesson. And I've got it split into two parts. So in this video, we're gonna go through the first half. If you'd like to learn the second half, access the on-screen tab viewer, download the tablature, and also download the MP3 jam tracks so you can get all of those elements to practice this lesson. You can get those things by going to activemelody.com, go to the weekly lessons page and do a search for EP462. All right, so this song is played in the key of G, and it's a 1-4-5 chord progression, which means there's a G chord, a C chord, and a D chord. That's it, just really three chords to worry about. And we are going to be playing the chord changes. So as the chords go by, we're going to be throwing licks at those chords, or attaching licks to the chords. That's probably a better way to say it. So when the G chord goes by, we'll do a little G lick. When the C chord goes by, we'll do something in C, and so forth. It'll make sense as we get into it. It's a little different than playing in the key of a song, which is what we do more for blues, or when we're playing in the pentatonics. This is a little different than that. But it's something that you should definitely know and, uh, and use, because you can apply this to your playing, no matter what style you play. Okay, so let's take a listen to this first part so we can get it in our ear, and then we'll break it down. Okay, so we start off playing over the G chord, and I played this. Now this is all based around uh, this G chord right here, where we bar in the third fret, uh, and that would be our G chord using the E shape out of the cage system. But I'm not playing the bar, I'm not playing all six strings. When I play this, now you could do it that way, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, in some ways that would be better because you'd have that low G string as well. But what I like to do, just because it fits my hand a little better, is I play it like this. So it's the same chord, but we're just missing the bottom string. So I kind of think of that as like your F chord shape, but we play it up here. And when I started that, I played the bottom, or I played strings 5, 4, and 3, and then strings 3, 2, and 1. So it goes like this. Now I use this all the time. This is your first little takeaway. This doesn't sound like much, but trust me, you can use this, this technique. If you're hanging out on a chord for a while, it's kind of a, a rhythmic way of addressing a chord. And you're just playing the bottom part of the chord and then the top part of the chord. But the thing is, you can't let it ring out if you're playing it like this. You're, you're, you're truncating that, that ringing part. So as I hit the top three strings, I release the tension with my left hand and mute it with my left hand. So it's like this. As opposed to... Okay, okay so that's the first chord. And then we come up here and play a G chord here using the D shape. So that would be your, uh, think of your D chord, but if you put your middle finger up here on the seventh fret, just play those top three strings. So you have G, G, and then I played this, bar the first three strings on the fifth fret, and then back to your G chord. And I just use that as a, a little embellishment. If I'm hanging out on a chord, I can go from the one chord, to the two chord, it's just another thing you can do. So now, backing up from the beginning of this, we have. So after the, the little triad there, I come back to the G chord here that I started with, with an upstroke. Then the song goes to the C chord. And this is what I played. Same kind of thing, really. So when we started that G chord, we based it on the E shape out of caged. When we come to this C chord, we're gonna be basing it on the A shape out of cage. So I'm just playing the C chord using the A shape. And I, I started kind of the same thing, actually played it the same way we did the other one. Played the low note, and then the, the top part of that. So it's the fifth string, and then strings four, three, and two. And then watch this. So this is just setting up the C chord, and then we go five, six, seven on the fifth string. And actually I picked the fifth fret and then slid from the sixth to the seventh. And after that, I used my index finger to, to bar there on the fifth fret, and I played strings four, three, and two. So, so what is this? This is just another voicing of your C chord. So you've got your C chord like this, and you've got your C chord like this. 
The triad is the same, but the bass note is different. In this case, we're playing a C chord with a C in the bass. Then in this case, we're playing a C chord with an E in the bass. And this would be like a C chord from the G shape out of cage. All right. Anyway, that's what's going on. So we have. So then the song goes to the D chord, and to get there, I did this. Let me show you what I'm doing here, and then we'll exp I'll explain it. So I'm starting uh, with a bar on the sixth fret, uh, barring the first four strings, but I pick the fourth string, then pluck with my ring finger the second string. Now you could use your pick for both of those if that's not as comfortable to hybrid pick that. But that's what's going on there. And then we slide that up a fret. So sixth fret, seventh fret. These notes are from that triad, right? That's your D chord using your A shape. Think of it that way. And then there's the little triad. So it's the same thing we've been doing when we play the C chord. We we have that triad there. We just didn't specify it. And that's what I, what's going on here. I'm just targeting that triad, even though I'm just playing the two notes from it. Okay, so after this, you have this lick. A pedal steel country lick. I love this lick, but you hit, here's the big takeaway from this lick. You're gonna be able to play this lick anytime you want if you can see it this way. If you can picture your major pentatonic scale, pattern one, for, for D, because remember, we're playing over a D chord, so I'm matching the chords by playing the chord changes. I'm playing the D major pentatonic scale. So where this little triad is, and you can picture, there's your D chord using the A shape, there's the triad. Your major pentatonic scale is right there. So that triad lives inside your major pentatonic scale. Light bulbs are starting to go off and you say, okay, so there's your major pentatonic scale, but what about that pedal steel lick? It's inside the major pentatonic scale lick. So that's just taking the notes from that major pentatonic scale. You're holding the 10th fret second string while you bend the ninth fret third string like this. And you gotta get it just right. I, I over bent it there, but it's bend and release. Now I'm hybrid picking that. I find that easier to pluck with my ring finger on the second string while I pick on the third string. Bend and release, and then down to the triad, but play strings two and three. So then you can see that pedal steel lick lives inside your major pentatonic scale. And there's more we can do to that which we'll get to in the, in the next video, but there's other notes we can play, but it's all based on your major pentatonic scale. Okay, let's back it up and play it from the beginning up to that point. Then the song goes back to the G chord, and what I played was... It's the same lick, we're just moving it down from the D shape to the C shape to the G shape. You can see what I'm doing though, it's, I'm just taking that major pentatonic scale for each of those chords. D, C, down to the G. So over the C chord I just played this. Same thing as we played up here for the D, we just slide it down two frets. And then we come all the way down to, the, to play it over the G chord. So pinky at this point for the G chord, your see remember your G major pentatonic scale would look like that. So you've got your nut there that's holding that triad. So we're gonna put our pinky on the third fret second string, and then second fret third string with middle finger. We're gonna play it like that. It's a John Fogarty lick. So we're gonna do two full bends on that second fret third string while playing the third fret second string then release it, and then play the open third string with your third fret second string. Now that's hard to do. It depends on the action of your guitar and what you're playing. Now this is definitely a lesson for electric guitar. That would be hard to do on acoustic. And then after this open third string, there's this lick. 
That's a country bluegrass leg. So we're gonna play the third fret sixth string. And then there's a slide from the first fret to the second fret on the fifth string. And then the open D string. And then there's the second fret uh, on the fourth string, back to your open fourth string. So. And then all the way up here to your open G string, which is your uh, open third string. That's a very commonly used bluegrass lick. And then after that open third string, we're gonna slide from the third fret to the fifth fret on the fourth string. It's not as hard as it looks. So you're sliding into that same note. So backing up from here, from that D. Then we go to the C, to the G. All right, let's listen to the next part. All right, so from here, we're playing that fifth fret fourth string along with the open third string, same note. And then watch this. We're gonna walk that down while I let that third string ring out. So that's fifth, fourth, third on the fourth string. And then open second string, open third string. That's like a G7 chord, right? And now we're gonna walk it to the C, watch this. I love that. That's a really cool transition to get to a C chord. That's just the C chord from first position that you already know. So it's open fourth string, first fret, second fret on the fourth string. That's a hammer on though. And then we're gonna come up here and play uh, w with our index finger on the first fret, second string. That's the same positioning as when you play your C chord in first position. But we're only playing strings four and two, getting that harmonized sixth. Okay, so. Now watch this. This is an awesome little embellishment. I just did a little short um, a lick video on this, uh, this very technique. So from here, we're gonna just walk up to another voicing of the C chord. Um, but here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to the third fret, strings four and two, fourth fret, up to the fifth fret. Isn't that cool? Now connect this to your C chord using the A shape. Ah, this is where the light bulbs go off. You gotta pay attention to this. There's your C chord here, right? There's those two notes we just played. Oh yeah, they're in, this, they're in the chord, I got it. So you got, all of that is in this little container here, this little C container. That's how I think of it anyway. It makes it easy. So now I've got a C down here that I can slide up to here. I'm just connecting this one to here. Okay, so this next lick is all played over the D chord, and this is D major pentatonic. This is where we get into some pedal steel licks. So that's the lick. So it's uh, third fret, fifth fret, back to the third fret on the second string. And then, by the way, this is D major pentatonic scale pattern four. For those of you wondering where we are, that's just major pentatonic for pattern four. Connect that to your D chord here. This is the thing, the key. You gotta connect it to a chord shape so you can use this going forward. So we're gonna do a full bend on that fifth fret second string. And then we're gonna hit the fifth fret first string right behind it, that's hard to do. And then back to the uh, second string. So we have, and watch this. So while you're holding that bend, this is where it gets tricky. Now this is not for everybody, but, but try and do it. Full bend, hold the bend, first string, back to the second string, and then index finger, third fret, first string, ah, it's killing me. And then release that second string. That's the lick. And then we come down to the third fret, second string. Man, that, that is hard. It just depends on the string gauge and how your guitar is set up. But on this guitar, it's difficult. Okay, so that's that lick. Now remember, this is all played over a D chord. Nice little pedal steel lick, connect it to your chord shape. The next thing, 
is it like this. It's just a full bend on the fifth fret first string and a full bend on the fifth fret second string. Bend and release, and then we come down to the fifth fret second string. And then down to the third fret second string. Okay, so that licked together. And then I come down to this fifth fret third string to transition us into the G chord. Then the next thing I play gets us into the G chord. So this would be like a G sus4. So I was thinking G, we're just transitioning into the G chord. So from here, my index finger went ahead and barred the first two strings on the third fret. And I just played uh, it with my ring finger on that fifth fret third string. So it's three, one, two, three. And then a hammer on on the third string from the third fret to the fourth fret. And you can see I'm just making the G triad there, right? That's that so that hopefully that you can see I'm just playing the G sus4. Very country. A lot of country licks will you'll take a whatever your chord is, your major triad. And you'll work in those little sus4 uh, licks like that. That's how I think of it anyway. So And that's what we have for part one. I realize it's a lot of information. There's another whole section where it gets a little more advanced, so at, at least in terms of string bending. So we're gonna take string bending to a, a new level as we get into the part two video. Even if you can't do it, you should at least watch it and understand where they're coming from so that if you can't do the full bend, you can at least understand where those licks are, how they're connected to the chord shape so that you can start to play your own little licks out of those. Well, hopefully you've picked up a few ideas from this. And, uh, and you'll pick up a few more in the part two video. All right, we'll see you in part two.